sorry about that interruption there in the middle of the ARK daily chart. I was talking about if we lose 4220, the nested bull count is gone. And then we're looking at potentially a leading diagonal. And that pretty much has to hold the $40 level. Uh, that would be the lows corresponding to early July. If that's lost, then this is much more of a bear flag look. And at that point, maybe bears have successfully stopped the rally uh, below the June highs in everything except the Qs, and we move down to fresh yearly lows. But at this point, I still give this count a shot. We have this nested count. And if this is correct, we're going to see a rocket shot in growth stocks in June, which means I need to make sure that I go through a lot of those names to try to set you up for what those counts might look like. Okay, we still got more main ETFs for us to crunch through. And so we've got DIA on the weekly. Really nice weekly look. There's that weekly RSI divergence that I showed you on the S&P at the yearly low. And so the count for DIA, I have it strongly within that minute three. It's the one that's already reached like IWM that potential minute three area of minor three. Um, within the short term, though, I don't think the small squiggles look done to me. So we could see here on DIA, which, by the way, was a really great trade for me on Friday. I got in right in here on DIA, sold it near the top at 329. We could see a move back into that same level, and we keep just stacking up that progression upwards towards the 1.618 on DIA. So I'm certainly looking at that level here. Again, there's an invalidation level, very clear. It's this minuet one high at 322.20. If price breaks into that, this count is incorrect, and we have to make sure that we're on guard for something much more bearish. You're going to see similar structure and counting in financials. It's really crucial that financials participate heavily. They've all reported. We were able to move up in the second half of July pretty strongly. And so we get into the daily, you're going to see a very similar count within that minor three here. Into the short term, a similar set of invalidation. We don't want to see any weakness early in the week Monday trade into this minuet high, which is at 33.16. So I would be using DIA and XLF as just very clear invalidation levels uh, for us to be looking at, at, at short-term bull market continuation. Again, um, if those levels are traded into, it does not mean that the bullish thesis is lost. What it means is we would have to change to a lower probability one, two, three, four, five leading diagonal. And if that happens early in the week, I'll be updating those fibs. And, and if you want that day-to-day -day continuous updating, a daily discord, blog updates post-close, is come join the premium service. Come join Pikes Peak Trades, and, uh, and you're going to get um, everything that you're going to want market-wide according to your tier um, updated continuously throughout the week. Okay, so that's the main set of indices and ETFs. We get into the individual stocks and we got to look at the big tech big boys. So we look at Apple and look at Apple conquer all of the weekly moving averages. You want to see your big boys lead, boom, there it is in Apple. It's pretty hard to get immediately bearish this chart when it's already back above all these. Now, does that mean that we just go straight to all-time highs? No, not necessarily. I still have Apple potentially within a completed five-wave count. So it is possible that we see that more significant leading diagonal one-two correction that, that's going to pull Apple back to, let's say, the upper 140s. I'm going to go ahead and put that fib in there for you uh, because Apple's not the only stock that has this potential count. Let me get that fibbed out a little bit bigger. There we go. That probably needs to be even bigger. And then there, that would be the level that we're looking for. Somewhere in the 140s, if in fact we do get uh, leading diagonals on the indices. Uh, but I have, in the, even in the short term on Apple, I still have room to go. So I, I don't think this is done in, in its way five. Uh, so we could see it 165 or higher before we would actually get 
that higher degree pullback. So we certainly should talk about the other big boys. We get into Amazon and um, Amazon, uh, interesting candle. So we've got a doji candle close after the earnings. So uh, I've been showing you kind of a, a variety of way four pullbacks. Certainly possible that Amazon topped in three and is going to give us that ABC down. That would correspond to that wave four on S&P, uh, DIA, XLF, on Qs, maybe that sub-degree one, two. But again, in validation, we want a nested bull to make sure four doesn't trade into one. And you've got it at 125.49, the high on July 22nd. Would not expect price to pull back below that um, in these nested counts. Okay, so we continue. Um, going to skip meta. Uh, you make a, a new yearly low off your earnings, and it's not one that I'm interested in counting. But Goog, absolutely interested because look at how it started to move back through the top of this month's long range, clearly above all the daily EMAs. And if we're bull, Goog is going to move. And it is one in the short term. I'm not entirely sure about where it is. I've got that one, two, three, four possibility. Maybe we spike up, pull back. But again, we need to hold right here at 114.70. So this is a great level for you to go long, playing this as a one, two, three. It's also possible that this is a leading diagonal into a one high, and this would be the two pullbacks. So that would correspond to the blue fib that you saw on Apple. If we get the first week of August, something much more short-term bearish. Take a look at Microsoft. So uh missed on earnings, was down big after hours, but then reversed quickly. And look at where it closed. Right on a, a longer term old diagonal channel at the 1.618 above the daily Bollinger Band. So it's also possible that we see it within its own wave four. And you're going to see those fibs right in here. I would be looking for this long-term bull market channel at about 272 to hold any way for FIB. Invalidation from Microsoft Clear. You can hold long all the way above minute one at 265.40 on July 22nd. Same date corresponding there to Amazon. Okay, now we get into Tesla. And, you know, what an amazing move from Tesla. Uh, we see that huge breakout uh, well above this fib. I'll update these fibs on the small time frame chart. Um, I, I don't see this per, this count here is now invalid. It's not counting as a one, two, three, four, five down. Uh, you could give this a triple zigzag. That's probably what you'd have to do. And this is just another X wave move uh, within that. But man, we see where we're at from a technical perspective, get into the weekly here, just like Apple leading out all the, all the way above all of its EMAs. I think a really, really good chance that towards the middle part of this decade, uh, we've got price strongly back within the 1000s. Take you into the short term chart here and you're going to see, have we topped in three do we pull back in four? Certainly ready for it. If we do, this breakout level in the mid 840s is what sprung it. Had a number of members that played that really, really nice bull flag consolidation for a huge gain to finish on Friday. Um, and, you know, if you had a bearish bias on this name, you just got toasted uh, since its earnings. May maybe you captured on this, but we were ready for this pullback. Um, and then played it strongly the rest of the week. And we're, I think, still set for continuation. So there's your big tech names. Uh, Want to take you through a few more in tech because NVIDIA and AMD, like Apple, have potential one, two, three, four, five counts. So I'm on guard for that pullback. Uh, could show you the same type of look on AMD that I want to get you to the daily. Totally could see that. Uh, we've got AMD that reports on Tuesday. NVIDIA reports much later. So if AMD's weak, that could spark that too. That could give us maybe a little more of a pullback in IWM. Um, and But also possible, just like Apple, that we're just going to keep extending 
in that minor five. Boeing, another one that I've been looking at quite a bit. Uh, I look at this as some pretty nice consolidation here that I think wave four is done. I think this would look much better if we could get one more spike this week. So this four is done. If we could move up and set a new high here into the mid 160s, I think that would give a better look. It's not required because I could move that minor three high to here and we're just looking at potentially a minor four triangle before we eventually move up to try to challenge the 200-day SMA. Let's keep looking at other individuals. I said if uh, Art K is going to break out, growth stocks have to do it. Here's Square. Now moving above this week, the eight-week EMA. We get into the daily, and, and this is a great sign. Look at these daily EMAs that have been conquered that are now starting to curl up. We're starting to get EMA crosses. So I tried a Friday Lotto on Square. I kind of got burned out here in this chop. Rolled these out uh, into August 5th because I'm playing this three count. So I do still see a lot of individual growth names with potential three of three counts. Maybe we got cues to run this past week. Maybe we get growth to run this week, and Square is certainly one that I'd have to keep in mind, uh, as is Shop. So Shop made a recovery off of its earnings uh, pre-market. That would have been an amazing candle to buy. Then I think setting a nested one too. So if, if we break last week's high on Shop, I think we could see a run all the way up to $40 to challenge uh, the July high. You're going to see on the daily, an interesting doji, some indecision there on shop to close the week. So this one, to me, isn't as good of a look as what I think we have on Square. Let's get into Zoom. This is another one I'm, I'm really interested in because I think we've seen a 1212 on Zoom. Now, that's all contingent on holding the July 26 low. So if, if this loses $100... Uh, take this count off the table, but are we just nesting here? If we break out on Zoom above 108, I think this thing could fly big time up into the 120 area. You're going to see that that's going to correspond to this daily volume POC, which is kind of an, maybe an internal neckline, and it doesn't report earnings all the way to the end of August. So I think we could see a big run up into that earnings report in Zoom. Certainly one uh, that I've definitely got on my short-term radar for trading. Okay, um, that's going to be the individual stocks that I wanted to concentrate on. Uh, don't want to avoid our metals and miners because, man, did, did they have a reversal the last couple weeks? And are we seeing here in GLD and SLV uh, bottoming signs? I suggested that to you. We could have that primary low in place. That was uh, two weeks ago. And on to the daily. Now, this still has a one, two, three, four, five bear look. And on the short term, I had played this really well with our group. We had calls uh, over 100% this week on this move in GLD. I'm wondering if, like uh, some of the main indices, do we get a wave four pullback here to start the week, one more move up, and then that's going to set the possibility of a wave one, two, three, four to start a new bull leg. I uh, want to show you SLV because almost uh, over 9% on the week, and we saw some amazing moves in silver juniors and majors. We get into a name like AG. Look at that candle. That has to get your attention. You've got a massive bullish engulfing weekly candle. I think that could have set uh, an intermediate to bottom, uh, but I'm not buying yet because we're right into resistance, diagonal and 50 SMA. So I am looking um, in this sector, I want a wave two pullback. You give me a pullback right into this area on a name like AG, I want to be looking to get long. Same for GDX. So let me show you that on the daily that I'd be looking for this to set an inverse head and shoulder. So a move up, a move back down. So we see here a neckline. We get a move down into the mid-25s. I think this is an opportunity for a buy to potentially get a really great move um, in some mining names up through late summer, early fall. 
Okay, I um, want to also show you GDXJ because this is, is even more powerful than GDX, that this is a 1212. So let me throw that fib up there. Maybe you want to play JNUG. Maybe you want to do GDXJ calls. And I think if we get some reconnection here with our eight day EMA, eight and 21 EMA clustered right around 32. That's going to be the area that I'm going to be looking to add some JNUG. Okay, final one um, for, for metals and commodities is XLE. And if you've been following me for a while, you, you know that I've been looking for that next leg selling down in XLE. And I thought we had it right in here um, in late July. I thought we had a breakdown, a test. I got short. But that did not follow through, and I stopped out quickly, and, and then we got just the, the move up in this C leg with the general market, and then we had a bunch of names report really good earnings on Friday. So uh, there, there is absolutely no short signal here, and it's possible that this count is incorrect. So, I, so I'm watching that closely, uh, that maybe this was actually the, the three and the four, and we do get one more high in XLE, certainly from an inflation point of view, would not be positive. Maybe that's not market positive. So this is the one thing I'm not quite so sure about, uh, but I am still watching. We reverse from these potentially bearish FIB levels, and we get down back in here, 71.72. I'm not one to try to top tick, but if we break these diagonals, I think we really could see that C leg down. Okay, as always, we close with Bitcoin, and this is Saturday morning here on July 30th, and look at what we've got uh, with Bitcoin. Like you're seeing in individual stocks, I think a really key breakout. We're back above uh, the July high. We're, we're pushing a 0.5 fib for anything that's bearish, about as high as it can go under probability. Um, and we get into my nested count that I've been sharing for weeks and it's looking good. This is one thing that is still calling for continuation and risk on. And if we continue to see risk on throughout the weekend in crypto, uh, look at the move even just this morning in XRP. Uh, incredible move this morning in XRP. And what I would have is a nested three wave. Uh, I've been talking about ADA for weeks that you should have bought uh, the, the test here, actually for a week. The test right here is what I was saying. Get in this uh, and, and you would already be up almost 20% right here. So uh, man, um, it's looking pretty good for continuation and risk on assets. We look at the BTC weekly. We're already back above some significant moving averages and this is just good for risk assets. Uh, so if, if you had played my recommendation last week on the video, you're already up really nicely on Bitcoin and ADA. And from what I'm seeing now with XRP involved is this is looking like it could just continue. So as I always do, let me close you with the short-term chart and that'll be the SPX short-term chart. Uh, just so you got your short-term bearings here. I would say my primary view is for a spike Monday into those more typical fibs, then a pullback that's going to be viable. And then I think the bull count just says we keep moving up uh, with viable dips through the month of August. So uh, really fun times here. And I'm, I'm really optimistic that we're through the worst. Um, the count so far from the bull side have been playing out really well. Uh, but as always, we have a plan for anything. Uh, as I mentioned, if, if you want up-to-date, daily, continuous uh, work from me, is come join us at pikespeaktrades.com. We've got a great group, had a great, great month, um, and we're just looking for more. So take care, have a wonderful weekend, and uh, we're going to be ready for what the market throws at us to start the month of August.